Hi everyone, this is Margaret Manning and welcome to Mornings with 60 and Me. Today is Monday, it is September the 19th, so welcome to a new week. Hope that you've got something fun planned for the week. Uh, I've got my cup of tea here. Today I am drinking my English breakfast, nice traditional cup of tea, which is, which is wonderful. So uh, grab a coffee or tea, have a seat. I'll bring you up to speed on what's going on in the world. And uh, then I've got some stories for you that hopefully will get the week off to a great start. So in New York City, of course, over the weekend, there was a bombing in Manhattan. Um, it was, um, there's been no, um, no one's claimed responsibility yet. So it does not seem to have a direct connection to international terrorism, but it was a bomb exploded in a dumpster in an area called Chelsea in Manhattan. And they found found a second device four blocks away and uh, the, the strongest lead they've got right now uh, is to look at surveillance cameras and see that there was a, a man who appeared to be in both places. So the same person. Um, I'm sure there's a lot of work ahead of the police department to try to understand what happened. There were 29 people injured, but no one seriously. And um, hopefully New York can heal from this. It's, it's, not a, um, it's a very worrying sign. But um, in Minnesota this weekend, there was another incident uh, as well. This is where a man um, attacked eight people in a mall, a shopping mall in Minnesota. And uh, he was actually shot by uh, an off-duty security guard but he he did injure eight people and the Islamic State is saying that he was a soldier of uh, their organization and claim responsibility so that's the second thing that happened this weekend um, you know obviously United States is um, trying to deal with you know with these kinds of situations and just wish them well it's just a, a challenge everywhere in the world these days now a quick update on uh, elections there were two elections this weekend. One was in Germany. Now, um, this was in Berlin, which is the capital of Germany. And Angela Merkel's party, as was expected, uh, did not do well. The anti-migrant, anti-refugee party, uh, of, of, you know, is putting a case forward. Uh, they're very opposed to Angela Merkel's open door refugee policy and they did better in the elections than she did and um, you know this is going to be a trend I think for Germany that um, the president what the chancellor will have to you know be aware of just to give some context though just so you know Berlin is a beautiful city I love it to visit but there are 70,000 people who have moved in there this year and uh, it's you know really put a strain on the infrastructure and services so it's um, you know I guess not surprising that there would be some challenges to this open door policy. Uh, they're, they're struggling with housing and other, other challenges. So that's the situation in Germany over the weekend. And in Russia, they also had parliamentary elections this weekend. And uh, as it wasn't surprising that the pro-Putin um, United Russia Party uh, did very well. They got about 51% of the vote. There were some opposition candidates, um, but they got very small percentages of support, um, although it's said that they might you know, be able to make some difference at the local levels, um, but uh, the United Russia Party uh, was, was victorious. I read this weekend that Russia's uh, democracy is what they might call a managed democracy. <laughs> there was a lot of talk about um, voter fraud and uh, all kinds of other issues, but uh, that was a decision in Russia. The pro-Russia Party is, um, is back in power or the United Russia Party, I should say. Um, in Kashmir, um, which is in northern India, there was a bombing uh, this weekend. We've talked about this before, and it's kind of an interesting place. It's uh, it's right at the north tip. It's, pr it's um, primarily Muslim population, but the area is, is managed by both Pakistan and India. So this weekend, militants attacked an Indian um, army brigade headquarters. 17 people were killed. This has been going on now for several months. It's not really been in the news very much, but it's... Um, it's it's a worry in that part of the country, that part of the world. So um, here's a, a, maybe a, a better feel-good story, uh, at least I'm happy to report it, uh, which is in France. Um, we, know, we all know that plastic is a big problem for the rest of the world. Um, I, I talked about when I was in Bali how much plastic is wasted, how it's really harming our infrastructure and um, our, um, the, the, the fish and animals in the sea. And so uh, France has taken a step to uh, basically deal with plastic. And what they've done is passed a new law that has said uh, every piece of plastic in, by the year 2020 has to either be compostable 
or it has to be uh, biodegradable. So they're trying to do something to prevent this um, you know, abundance of plastic that's, that's really harming our ecosystem in the world. So this doesn't take um, effect until 2020, so they've got some time to think about it. Oh yes, the Emmys. The Emmys happened last night, and here's the winners. I don't watch a lot of TV, so I, I, I wasn't aware, but the, the Game of Thrones won for the uh, top drama. A show called The Veep, which I've never seen, actually won for the best comedy. And the O.J. Simpson versus People won an award for the Outstanding Limited Series. Um, so that's, those are the three that I heard about. And celebrating accomplishments, um, the um, Paralympics closed last night. And it was a fabulous um, uh, event. I saw the, the pictures and, of course, celebrating all the amazing Paralympic uh, athletes who took part. So uh, that's it for the Olympics this year. Uh, off to Tokyo, I think, where we have our next in four years' time. Now, I've got a couple of stories here that I want to share with you. One is one that um, I hope it helps. Uh, it's, it's something that I, I just realized we've done some articles on and maybe it's a time of the beginning of the week to look at a situation a lot of people face and that's getting out of debt in your 60s. Now, I want you all to know that I'm in this on this journey with you. I, I don't want you to think for a minute that I have not been through some of this stuff myself. So I'm speaking from personal experience as well as from just wanting to help. So many women in our community uh, are dealing with, with debt. Um, you know, we're known as a sandwich generation. You know, we're in between looking after parents and, and providing help to adults and our adult children and grandchildren. You know, it's really tough. We want to be generous. We want to be kind. It's part of our nature, I think. But we realize that um, every time we do certain things, we're moving ourselves closer into debt. Um, a report I was reading said that um, women, uh, sorry, people over 50 have an average credit card debt of about $9,000. And many, 25%, are still paying off a mortgage. So when we get into our, our 60s, we think that you know things are going to get easier financially. Not always the case. So here's some ideas. And we've actually written an article on this and I'll, I'll leave the link so you can review it in, in detail. But basically, the first thing we suggest, well, in the article we suggest is to review your family obligations. You know, take a look at money that you're giving to family and see whether it's really something that you can afford. That's number one. Track your expenses. This is another one that's really important. I think that um, you know sometimes we we tend to treat ourselves uh, when we're when we're struggling a bit financially. We go out and get things we don't really need. Um, you can use it. There's an online tool called Mint.com where you can actually track all your expenses. These are things that I think it's is important to do. Just look at things you're buying, maybe frivolously or you know, thinking, oh, I deserve this, and then realize you don't really need it. So track your expenses. Renegotiate fixed costs is another thing. Now, um, you can do this in lots of different ways. I mean, you can look at the things, you know, insurance, life insurance, um, car payments, uh, other debts, and see if you can, and phone bills, see if you can phone up the company and just ask them, you know, do you have a better deal this month? <laughs> just ask. And sometimes you'll find, oh, yes, we've got a special for three months that, you know, it just gives you a breather. I mean, yes, you've got to watch, watch for conditions and all of that. But sometimes just renegotiating those monthly payments can be really, really helpful. And, you know, just try to save a few dollars. One bit of advice I'll just add from my personal experience is talking to people at these companies that, you know, that you owe money to is a really helpful they're people. Sometimes they will help and sometimes they can help. So it's worth it. Um, there's also some things you can do to sort of um, uh, uh, save money while paying down debt. And there's one thing called social saving, which is really interesting. I didn't actually really know about these, but one is called I'm looking, Smarty Pig. I want to make sure I got that right. Smartypig.com, where you basically make a commitment to save money and then you, you put it on Facebook. You share your journey with, with your friends and you kind of, um, you know, reinforce your accomplishments. And then there's another one. It's called, I think it's called Skint or Stick, stick.com. This is another one where you publicly declare your, your financial goal. And it doesn't have to be with Stick, a financial goal. It can be like losing weight or some other goal. And you go up, on, put it on Facebook, share it with your friends, and then you sort of set yourself a penalty 
So if I don't do these things, this is what I'm going to do. So there's lots of these social saving programs where you can try to save money while you, you know, while you're de dealing with, um, with with debt that's maybe getting a little out of control. So I hope that's helpful. You know, I, I mean, I just will say at the end here that I know this is hard. I know it's hard. It, money is a real worry for a lot of our community. But I'd love for you to share in the comments below the things you've done, you know, things you may have done to um, to save money, to to make this a little easier in your in your sixties. So my final piece, and this is just a fun Monday frivolous thing to talk about, and that is what your favorite time of year says about your personality. Okay, so I, I won't say what mine is until the end, but um, basically, you know, this is a seasonal change for us right now. We're end of summer, early fall in the Western Hemisphere, at least. And every season, you know, you sort of think, oh, either, yes, I'm looking forward to it, or no, I wish I could stay where I am. You know, do you love the summer? You know, loose clothes, lots of sun, bright, uh, bright days, easy life. Or do you like the autumn? you know, where the things start to get cool and you enjoy pumpkins and Halloween and, uh, you know, pumpkin soup and all those good uh, heartwarming things. You know, are you a winter person? Do you like the cold weather and get out there and do skiing and, and uh, winter activities, hot chocolate by the fire? Or are you a spring person, you know, who just loves those spring flowers and that sense of renewal and, um, you know, the beginning of a new new season? Which, which one's yours? Okay. Think right now, and then I'll tell you what this article by Marissa Brown, in uh, she writes for a magazine called The Stir, what she says about your choice. Okay, got it? All right, if you are a summer person, it says you are a freedom lover. You're a sunny personality and people admire you for always lighting up a room. You're fun, you're, um, you, know, you love to have a good time and no opportunity ever passes you by, you go for it. That's, that's summer. If you're a full person, you tend to be, according to Marissa's article, a little more conservative and traditional. You're a social butterfly when it comes to family. You love organizing family events, you like you know, having parties, but you're, you're kind of known to be a little more traditional, very loyal, creative, and cheerful, a cheerful person, a bit of a homebody. I don't know if this is all ringing true or not, but it's interesting. It's just good fun. But if you're a winter person, you're practical and inventive and it says you're an optimist. You're, I mean, I guess if you can put up with the cold weather, you can put up with anything. So, you know, you're able to see beauty in everything. Your close friends are very few and far between. You have lots of, apparently you have lots of friends, but you have a few that are really, really special. And then if you're a spring lover, you're a go-getter, you're a positive person, you're creative, you're, you, you know, you love new challenges and you're kind of a natural born leader. You like doing things and saying, come on, everyone, come join me. That's your kind of personality. You're a bit idealistic. You don't maybe see things through that realistic lens sometimes and you're sensitive. That's the spring people. <laughs> so I'd love to know what you thought about that. I mean, it's obviously just just playful and fun and nothing to be taken too seriously. But um, I'll, sh well, no, I won't share mine. I'm gonna wait till you tell me what yours is and then I'll join the conversation. How's that? So that's my question for today. Is what is your favorite season of the year and why? Leave your comments in the section below. I'd love to start a conversation on this and I will reveal my choice too. And uh, I just hope you have a great Monday, everybody. Have a wonderful day. Take good care of yourselves. Uh, do something fun and uh, leave your comment in our, for, to our question of the day below, which is what is your favorite season of the year? Take good care, everyone. Have a great day. We'll see you all back here tomorrow on Mornings with 60 and Me. Bye for now.